If she has any regrets on her decision, she would laugh out loud without hesitation and say, Did you peep that right there? Yeah. Okay. okay. Because the nuns stepped into the conversation. But before we talk about what the nuns said, mm -hmm. the NFL senior vice president said this about his speech. So the outrage going on for Harrison Butker needs to be studied. Okay? And also it needs to be a question of why getting so much black. Oh, well, yeah. let me tell you this. Is, guys, you already know what's going on. Harrison Butker, which is an American football kicker for the yeah. Kansas City Chiefs. Not the first time we talked about the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, no, we've done it before. Not. Is getting so much backlash after his commencement speech that he did in Benedictine College, which is a private college in Kansas, right? Yeah. Now the thing is, he did a similar speech last year. He didn't get no backlash for it. He didn't, it. whatsoever. I think his delivery was so much more different than now. So did he intentionally tweak up his delivery? Probably wanted so, that 15 minute fame. Let's listen to what he said. That got a lot of backlash. For the ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young Correct. lives. You should be proud. I want to speak directly to you briefly mm -hmm. because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. <laughs> How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Yeah. Yeah. Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, mm -hmm. but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible yes. mm -hmm. because a girl I met in band class back in middle school, middle school. would convert to the faith, Oh, she converted. become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all. What is it? Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Said. So that small part, actually, the the whole speech is twenty minutes long, yes. right? So, but that small part really went viral. Went well, flames. A lot of people were disappointed. A lot of people were outraged both, about what he said. Both men and, and women. women. So what was the part that was really disappointing or well, outraged? No, I'll tell yeah, you why. why people were... I'll tell you why a lot of people got really angry. Let me tell you. First of all, Benedictine is a Catholic liberal arts college. Okay, that focuses on academia. It ain't no finishing school. It's not. Let's put that out of the it's way. Not. <laughs> the second thing too is he made a big statement at the beginning, saying, "Women, you are told a big diabolical lie." And the whole time I was like, "What was the lie? What diabolical lie? Like, yeah. let us know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not gonna get the jobs we really want. You know what I mean? The government is doing something else. What's a diabolical lie? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm getting." I'm mean, getting a degree in, you know, civil engineering. He has civil engineering. At the end of the day, you're not going to hire him. Civil... He didn't even explain what that diabolical lie is. He went off on talking about things that it's pretty understandable social things, you know. It's nice to be a mom and all that. As a matter of fact, what he does admit, he says, I'm not speaking from a place of wisdom. I'm mm -hmm. speaking from a place of experience. So you have to tell the women that are sitting there about to graduate, your wife is their reference point apparently so we're not going to take into consideration about all these women's come from a diverse social background mm -hmm. and probably to them getting an education probably is going to alleviate their social standing or do something for them not maybe if it's not financial probably on a personal level yeah. education means a lot to them he does talk about the nuances of, of why people are out there getting an education mm -hmm. he just went strictly to you're told a diabolical lie Education ain't, ain't the answer for you guys. Mm -hmm. The answer for you guys is it's being a, a mother, being homemaker. Yeah. What happened about the women who can't become moms? You can't be homemakers. What do? You, what about them? Where mm -hmm. do they go? And the thing is, I'm going to point out something. This guy is a millionaire. His wife is married to a millionaire. You understand what I'm saying? So they probably have maids. They probably have a butler. They probably have a, a, a person who cooks for them and all that. Teacher. So she has the means in order to be a homemaker a mother, a wife, right? She's not distracted with other stuff, things that like, I have to do the laundry or I have to clean the house or something like that. No, there's people who are doing that for her. So she could be, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's the She's case. a wag. She's a wag. Yeah, that's what it is. The thing is, I don't know why there's such a clash between a homemaker, a trad wife, a mother versus, you know, the business woman, the higher education seeking woman. Why can't they both exist positively in society yeah. that's okay they always got to pit the, one of the two against each other it's like you can have two of them respectively she's a primary educator to our children she's the one who ensures i never let football or my business hmm. become a distraction from that of a husband and father that's good i say all of this to you because i have seen it firsthand how much happier someone can be 
when they disregard the outside noise and move closer and closer to God's will in their life. That's nice. Isabel's dream of having a career might not have come true. Mm -hmm. But if you ask her today, if she has any regrets on her decision, she would laugh out loud without hesitation and say, heck no. Did you peep that right there? Yeah. He said his woman, though she didn't get her career dream, mm -hmm. dream, so I'm assuming her aspiration. If I ask her, does she regret anything now? She's going to say, heck no. Of course she's going to say, heck no. She literally married a multi-millionaire guy living her best bon vivant life mm -hmm. in mansions and private jets. Who's going to deny that kind of lifestyle? But I want to talk about the ladies that you're talking to in those graduation, in those seats. Yeah. They're getting closer and closer to their career dream. Why don't you kind of focus on that since you're in an academic environment and congratulate them. And not in finishing school. Not in finishing school. Uh, yeah, like... You know what? Listen, I'm going to be honest here. Uh, in some of his things, I agree with him. And in some cases, I don't. Listen, does radical feminism exist? Right? Does radical feminism really tell women to be hardworking women, thrive for the whole career you don't need corporate a man, area and all that independent women. don't focus on family or children and all that so you're a six-year-old woman who doesn't have kids and everything yeah i, I to me personally they, i feel like that's a negative i understand and they, and they are hurting the social structure of a family unit i get it 100 yeah. percent. so i think it. most of his speech is about the whole aspect of a, a family structure yeah um but other than but that but you know what even i believe too <laughs> Being an educated woman is very important in raising your kids. Yes. You're going to pass that knowledge and pass that information onto your kid. Like your mama. His mama is <laughs> academically, at this point, gifted. She's like a medical <laughs> physicist. She basically has a higher, higher education. She's a basically professor out of college. Mm -hmm. What? did she? Was she told a diabolical lie? She did it all. She went and got that higher education, and she ended up raising you. And how about the other stories that we have heard when women have married men like this? Yeah. But sign a prenup, get, and after finally, you know, divorces them, God forbid. leave them with nothing, with just the kids and no money, and where she needs to go for a higher education just to provide for her children because mm -hmm. the guy abandoned his role. Now he does talk about men and how men has a role in society yes. and how they neglect it. So let's hear about that one. To the gentlemen here today, part of what plagues our society is this lie that has been told to you that men are not necessary in the home or in our communities. As men, we set the tone of the culture. And when that is absent, disorder, dysfunction, and chaos set in. This absence of men in the home is what plays a large role in the violence we see all around the nation. Correct. Other countries do not have nearly the same absentee father rates as we find here in the U.S. Be unapologetic in your masculinity. Fighting against the cultural emasculation of men. Do hard things. Now, I agree with him on that point where he mm -hmm. said the absence of men in homes lead to corrupt society or a violent society. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is, if there is an agenda attacking masculinity, why you guys are so easily falling for that agenda? Mm -hmm. And also, where's the other attributes yeah. that, other than masculinity? Where, how about being a provider, being a, a teacher, being a protector, a, protector? a leader? All, yeah. All that stuff that, like you said, attributes That's to That's the build-ups of being a masculine men. man, yeah. right? And if you're leaving, if you're so easily leaving that post, leaving that position, women will take that position for you. And the reality is not by choice. A lot of these women are going to be forced into this position of being a provider, protector, supporter, just so that they can kind of compensate of what's missing yeah. in society. I feel like it's such a complicated subject. There's a lot of truth to what he's saying, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's a mismanagement or misallocation of like, who his delivery was bright. his delivery wasn't and right. who is to blame of what's going on in society i to be honest with you i feel like there is an attack mm -hmm. on religion mm -hmm. there is an attack yeah. on a family structure there's a lot going on there's an attack on even gender identity there's a lot going on now obviously his speech left a lot of oh, polarizing yeah. views some people are agreeing to disagree okay at the end of the day the sun will still rise tomorrow but what was interesting <laughs> the though earth is, will still rotate okay <laughs> what's interesting though is People are trying to have him canceled and have actually a petition going on to have him removed yeah. from Kansas City Chief. Now, do you think that's an extra step? Oh, 100% that's an extra step. Come There's no need. Guys. Like, he just voiced his views. The NFL senior vice president said this about his speech. 
So Jonathan Bean, NFL Senior Vice President and Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer said, Harrison Butker gave a speech in his personal capacity. His views are not those of the NFL. As an organization, the NFL is a steadfast in our commitment to inclusion, which only makes our league stronger. And I agree. Like, yeah. that is his views. That's from his experience. That is, um, However, <laughs> the nuns. The nuns jumped in <laughs> and said, we got one or two things we want to say about Butker's speech. Butker's words foster division instead of promoting unity in our church our nation and the world one of our concerns was the assertion that being a homemaker is the highest calling for a woman they continue to say we sisters have dedicated our lives to god and god's people including the many women whom we have taught and influenced during the past 160 years as well they said that these nuns these women made tremendous differences in the world in the roles as wives and mothers and through their god-given gifts in leadership scholarship and their careers so there you have it you heard it from the nuns i think they responded pretty well yeah some of you guys are probably you know agreeing to what he had to say and some of you guys are saying yo this is the beginning stages of the hands main tale <laughs> so <laughs> you guys in the end of the day um i don't know for where i stand i feel like there are some points that he it was correct and I feel like he was just there's more to his speech, like over yes, like 20 minutes. Yes, it was 20 time. minutes. I think you guys need to hear the whole speech. Mm -hmm. And some parts where it was very questionable, and some of them were like, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys, on that note. And I'm going to say congratulations okay. to all the graduates. Definitely. Congratulations, <laughs> and I hope you guys succeed and thrive in your future endeavors. Yes, yes, <laughs> in future endeavors. You guys, on that note, please subscribe and like this video. And bye now.